Java developer. Um, for a few years, I mainly designed and developed uh, backend applications. Uh, I'm here today to talk about uh, Java Message Service uh, API. Uh, but what I'm going to focus on uh, are other concepts than implementation details. So hopefully, if you plan to use AMQP or any other other protocol or API, you will. Find my presentation uh, also help. Um, what I want to start from, uh, oh, uh, here here are examples for the presentation. If I will have enough time, I'll show them to you. But if not, then you can view it on GitHub. And here's my email. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the presentation or the examples, you can uh, contact me then there. Uh, if you have any questions, or I speak too quietly, or you are not able to understand me, just wave your hand and ask your question or comment. If I don't see you waving hands too long, then just speak out. Uh, what I want to start from is, what's the point? Why, why should you even care? Uh, why, when, what may be the use case of using uh, asynchronous mes messaging? communication. Uh, so I show a simple use case. Uh, imagine you have a web app, uh, you have some registered users, uh, the users register because they want to have access to some restricted resources or post some comments. Uh, so you have you want to have uh, contact to the users so that you are able to send out some notifications or allow them to reset their passwords. Uh, so you gather emails during uh, the registration. When, when someone registers, you, you probably have some control behind it and uh, do such stuff as validation of the, income, of the incoming data and storing the customer. Uh, no, imagine you, you wrote such app and uh, at some point some user uh, forgets his password. He requests a recent password uh, link to his email, but he never gets it. Uh, it reveals that uh, he entered email invalidly, uh, incorrectly. So, uh, what, what would you do? You would probably add some uh, confirmation of email uh, to, to the registration step. So, upon registration, you would probably add sending confirmation links to, to, to uh, add customer method in control. Uh, so, let's assume you, you've added it. And uh, let's see what, what, what happens when user enters his data and tries to register now. In the background, uh, the web browser of the user sends a request to, to your web app server. Web app server sends a request to a mail application. Mail application sends uh, the data to SMTP servers for SMTP server to send the email, then uh, mail, uh, mail app mm, finishes the communication well with web app server, web app server uh, stores the data in the database and then answers the, the registering client. What's wrong with this solution? Uh, it takes time. It takes time to communicate with your web app or with your, your mail, mail app, then to communicate with the SMTP server. Uh, you can probably have some fancy logo to transfer through all of the nodes uh, there. So this is one problem. And the other problem is that simply one of the boxes may be not responding at the time. So uh, it, it will fail from, for a stupid reason like SMTP ser server being down, down for a while or your mail application being down for a while. And users left at the top. <laughs> so, um, what can we do about it? Uh, 
we can send this email asynchronously. So uh, it would okay. let's let's move uh, okay. uh, now. Uh, as a as a messaging provider, you can use, for example, JMAT. What's JMAT? JMAT is standard. Uh, it's quite an old standard, widely used one. And current specification has, I think, 11 years, but it's still widely used. Uh, it has lots of implementations, starting from open source ones like ActiveMQ, Hornetq, uh, to, to some specific ones like uh, Oracle pro provided, uh, I think it's called Oracle Advanced Queuing or TIPCO uh, EMS. Uh, what's cool about it is uh, uh, with this messaging concept, there's loose coupling. Uh, so there's uh, the only contract between uh, one app and the other is the message itself. Message one itself. So, uh, it allows to replace uh, the box on one side on the other uh, easily, and it allows to also scale easily because you can easily add more nodes at one of the ends uh, of the queue. Uh, also, it requires intermediary server, um, which some sometimes may be good, but uh, also requires. Uh, you to maintain something and configure another box. Uh, there are some solutions that allow you to embed a queue into your uh, application, like Hornet queue. But uh, generally, it, it requires intermediary server. It can be good though because those servers are really uh, good and proven, proven ones, so uh, they're less likely to fail than uh, your app, probably. Uh, a minus can be the fact that this is one-way communication. Uh, so you just send something to the queue and don't care about it anymore. Uh, and another mi minus is, as the name suggests, it is a J Java API. So uh, when you have an uh, application in PHP, then you have to uh, figure out something uh, to communicate with the JMS provider. Fortunately, there are some protocols that uh, JMS providers implement, uh, like Stomp, for example, that allow you to, to, to talk to JMS server uh, with uh, from different languages. So, okay, let's talk about communication schemes that the JMS provides. Uh, the simple one is called Q, and there's also something that's called a topic. Uh, Q provides a point-to-point -point communication. The topic is uh, publish, subscribe uh, communication. Uh, so, uh, this is actually how Q uh, works. Q can have multiple producers and multiple consumers. Uh, uh, and um, Q will take care of each message delivered uh, only once and uh, to one consumer. Uh, so if, uh, if all consumers are down, Q will keep the messages that are to be consumed and when a consumer comes, then uh, the message will be delivered to him. In our case, uh, it would look like as follows. Uh, first, uh, as in the previous uh, solution, uh, web browser contacts the web observer, then web observer just creates a uh, mail sending order and puts it into a queue, and then stores the data in the, in the database. Um, uh, thanks to the JMS re 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 reliability, it doesn't uh, have to care about uh, mail sending anymore. And thanks to its speed, it can answer a customer that the registration link will be sent to your, his email very fast. Uh, on the other side of the queue, mail app just picks up messages from the queue and uh, sends requests to SMTP server. Uh, 
and a SMTP server sends confirmation links to uh, customers' emails. So let's get back to the communication schemes. The second one is called topic. Uh, the difference between, uh, as, as, a, as QO, it can have multiple producers, multiple um, consumers, uh, but the difference is that in topic, each consumer gets all the messages. Uh, so it's basically uh, good for uh, sending out some notifications, for example. due to the fact that it sends out messages to all of the consumers. When there's no consumer, a uh, message will be simply lost. There's uh, one exception of this rule. It's called a durable subscriber. You can define a durable subscriber which will always get the message. If it's down, the message will wait for it uh, in the topic. So when this topic? I show a simple use case uh, for topic. No, uh, as I said, it's, mm, as I, I think of it, it's mostly for notification sending. Uh, so let's imagine we have an uh, error logging for, uh, for a huge system that consists of few applications, and each error has to be sent. If it's a big error, to, it has to be reported on some email, and it has to be stored on the disk. So this is how it would look like if you send the uh, notifications about errors uh, via web services or RMI. And if you, if you, oh, maybe let's get back to it. Okay. Uh, what, what are the problems with this? Uh, firstly, as you can see, uh, each uh, production app have to has to communicate with each of the error listeners, let's call them. So uh, it has to know where those error listeners are uh, and how to communicate with them. Uh, what is that? And secondly, uh, there it has to implement some uh, mechanism to handle error listeners <coughs> failure. What to do when when uh, an error happened and uh, sending an email that an error happened failed. So let's see what happens when we take a topic to it. Uh, then simply each of the apps that we have send will send uh, a message saying that an error happened to the topic. I call it error broke this topic. Uh, it would be more efficient because it's simpler, to, it's faster to, to send a message into the topic than to communicate with all of the error listeners. Uh, more reliable, uh, and as I said, there's less configuration needed for the production apps. Uh, on the other side, you just uh, uh, connect the error listeners to the topic and they all uh, receive, receive the messages. Uh, this is probably the case when we uh, would like to use uh, durable subscribers because we want to have all the errors uh, written to some storage and probably all the emails sent to uh, Another benefit of this solution is that you can very easily add an another error listener. So, you just uh, con connect it to the topic and it works. Uh, okay. Now I'd like to uh, dive a little deeper into how, how it works. So uh, the thing that's sent uh, to the queue and then consumed from the queue is called a message. A uh, message consists of headers which are uh, JMS specific things like uh, JMS priority. Uh, JMS priority allows you to say that some messages are to be provided before other messages. Um, properties, which are application specific headers, you can add uh, 
so, so uh, headers, some, I don't know, for example, with this email app, you could add uh, email address as a property to, to, the, to the message. And there is uh, the most uh, interesting part, the body, actually what you send there. And the body might be a string, might be, might be a map, and it also can be simply a serializable object. Um, so the message customer will probably be most concerned about uh, message body itself, but it can also use properties or headers to, to do something. But uh, the, the, uh, for our applications, the uh, thing that uh, makes uh, headers and properties important is the fact that they allow to filter messages that we want to consume. So there, there is a concept of message selectors in JMS. When you uh, attach a consumer to the queue or topic, you can say that you are not interested in all of the messages that com come there, but only to a subset of messages. For example, messages with priority one, or messages that have uh, the, the email address uh, admin and at ourwebapp.com. <coughs> Messages, uh, message selectors use SQL-like uh, syntax, uh, and they use properties and headers. You cannot uh, use body in uh, message selectors, and as shown in the example, you can use JMS priority and some some more properties. So message selectors uh, and the fact that we can have multiple consumers make a typical queue rather a take an over system than, than, than a queue. Do you know take an over systems? You have such? Uh, you can have one group of consumers uh, have uh, handle one group of uh, messages and another group of consumers handle another type of messages. Just like officials in the office, they, they are often grouped in some groups that are responsible for one or other types of issues. Another uh, key feature of uh, JMS is reliability. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, when someone is, when something is put in, in the queue, then uh, the requester doesn't have, the, the, the app that sends message into a queue doesn't have to care much about it later because uh, the message will be delivered, will be delivered. Yeah. And the mechanism that stands uh, behind it is called message acknowledgement. Um, messages are kept uh, on server uh, until acknowledgement comes. And there are several modes of message acknowledgement. Uh, first is auto, it's automatic. Uh, Generally, automatic should mean that uh, if your method that handles ma incoming message uh, doesn't fail, then message is consumed. But if you use Spring JMS for it, then uh, with auto, uh, message will be acknowledged uh, even before your method is uh, uh, involved. So there's a special message acknowledgement mode. For it, it's called uh, trans transactional, I think. Uh, client means manual, so if you implement uh, uh, message handler, you just have to invoke message.acknowledge. And dupes OK, uh, this is batch uh, message acknowledgement. So your app server or something after uh, Consuming uh, a lot of messages will send uh, acknowledgments for all of the messages, but as I wrote here, it may resu result in duplicates. So your application has to be ready for it. Yeah. Uh, another thing is uh, what happens when uh, uh, a message is uh, sent to, to the consumer, but 
it isn't consent. There is no message acknowledgement going back to JMS server. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what happens there, uh, message are redelivered. Um, message redelivery can, can be immediate or delayed by some specified on the queue level uh, amount of time. And uh, after messages are delivered, uh, the number of time you configured on the queue level, uh, there won't be lost, but the JMS provider won't be uh, trying to deliver it. Uh, once again. They will be put in uh, something called the letter Q. It allows you to fix uh, some bug in your application that resulted in uh, message being not consumed and then uh, take the messages once again for consumption. Another key feature of re reliability in JMS is message persistence. So uh, <laughs> if you define that a QR topic is pers persistent, uh, then after turning uh, out or failing of the JMS server, I don't know if it, uh, there is no current or something or network, then messages are still kept. So uh, when a message arrives to JMS server, it will write the message somewhere in the drive on, or in the database, and then when it fails uh, and it's brought, brought back, then it will pick up the, those messages. And it can be disabled if you target for a very high per performance. Any question? What is the size of the DLQ? Can be, can be, what, what, what is the place of storing? Is it hard, hard drive? Uh, it can be hard drive, it can be database, it can be simple memory. Uh, depends how you define it. There is, uh, for, for example, Planet Q, the default storage, message storage is hard drive. And thanks that it's very, very fast. Uh, I think for JMS messaging it was database, but I'm not sure. As I said, JMS is one-way communication. Generally, asynchronous messaging is most of it, it is uh, one-way communication. But there are some features that help you implement request, request response. Uh, it may be helpful if you have two applications that uh, and, and, uh, one handles Oh, maybe let's talk about an example. Let's say that you're uh, implementing bank software and you have one application that's managing the account and uh, uh, a transfer came to, to be uh, managed and then uh, account managing app has to send a request to, to another app with which in turn will communicate with uh, some other bank so to, to m actually make the transfer and then the, the, after the transfer is made there has to be some information on the account level that the transfer has been made so uh, firstly you can uh, send a message to, to, to some queue for a transfer handler and then Forget it for 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 about this for a week for 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 some time and then just listen to some response queue from transfer handler uh, and handle the response that the transfer uh, has been made. Uh, to implement the, this, you probably use JMS uh, installation ID. Uh, it is uh, a header JMS header and. Uh, it allows you to pair request and response. Uh, you have to code it manually. It's just uh, described in, in the standard that there is some field that allows you to do it. Uh, but generally, you do it this way: that uh, a request comes, uh, a requester puts the collation ID into the request. Then uh, you handle the request and uh, rewrite the correlation ID from the request to the response and send the response to 
the very small scale. Uh, this would uh, be enough if you had only one requester, but if you had many requesters, then you would uh, also need J JMS reply to. Uh, this is another header, and it, uh, it uh, allows you to put a JMS destination. Destination is a QR topic into uh, message headers, so you can, sorry, uh, icon managers can simply be, say that uh, he wants uh, transfer handler to, to handle this transfer, this transfer has correction ID, whatever, and the response has to be sent to response queue. And uh, if we have another app that uh, communicates to transfer handler, then it will send uh, its response uh, queue in GMS reply. Um, any question? So, uh, another fact is uh, not concerned, not not related with reliability, but uh, important fact about JMS is that it can be really really fast. Uh, I don't know the details of this test, but it was made on one box uh, with quad-core uh, CPU and I think 24 gigabytes of RAM and uh, Hornet Q uh, JMS provider and JBoss was able to handle 8 million messages per second. What was the payload of a uh, message? Uh, I don't know, unfortunately. Oh. Uh, probably not much because uh, it was, I think, on one gigabit switch, so it couldn't be too much because network would be. Uh, and I suspect it wasn't persistent messages. It was rather something handled in memory. But Eight million messages uh, in Java. Uh, I have some code examples. Very simple ones. Uh, if you want to see them, or should I leave them at the end? Because code, code is always boring. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to see code examples now? Okay. Uh, so the code examples are Spring Framework. I have a JMS server running in the background here. Uh, this is Hornet Q. Uh, uh, as I said, I, those, those examples are, are available on GitHub. And uh, I also wrote a short, short script to fetch Hornet Q, uh, unpack it, and to put the uh, configuration that's uh, in here, in conf directory. To, to Hornet Q, so the definitions of the needed queues or topics will be there. And, uh, with Spring Framework, it looks as follows. Uh, you define a connection factory. A uh, connection factory, the default solution for, for JMS is to pick, pick up connection factory from uh, JMS from JMDI. Uh, connection factory is something that simply produces uh, connection to the connections to the JMS server. And then you define a JMS listener container for the connection factory. Uh, actually, this acknowledge and concurrency are uh, not needed, uh, not required attributes. I just added them uh, for informatic reasons. Uh, yeah. And then in listener container you define listeners. Uh, and uh, listener definition looks as follows. You, you have to give it a destination and reference to, to, to the listener implementation. Uh, 
message listener is one type of uh, message consumer, but you can also uh, use, uh, and this is asynchronous one. You just define, you just uh, say that you have a message listener for this destination, and it will be invoked any time the message is delivered to your application. Uh, message listener is quite simple. Uh, it has to implement message listener interface. Uh, the interface consists of one method only, the method is called onMessage, and it gets a JMS message. In this case, uh, I have a producer that produces only text messages, so I'm expecting only text messages. And if the instance is a text message, then I just handle it. Handling means is uh, invoking message handler service. We'll print out some things from, from the given message. It doesn't want to work. <coughs> no. Okay. No. Let's start our server. Server to it's very simple. It just takes takes the context from the application XML files and start the context. It doesn't have any web observer or anything. It's just pure screen. Uh, and now let's go to the consumer. Uh, for sending messages, Spring Framework gives uh, a helper class that's called JMS template. It can be used for other things too, but I will use it for sending messages. Uh, it's quite a nice thing if you want to write some functional tests or something like that, uh, because it's really simple to use. Uh, let's unfold it. Uh, to, to send a message, you simply uh, invoke message sender.send. Unfortunately, it takes uh, as an argument something that has to implement message creator. In this message creator, you create a message, you create the message. In our case, uh, we create text message, set the text, set the proper key address to some value, and return the message. Uh, configuration of it looks as follows. Connection factory, exactly the same connection factory as was defined for the, for the server application. Uh, and the JMS template with def default destination uh, as here. So um, let's send the message. The message was sent, and Q message handler service wrote that. It should send us the message with this text to the given address. Any questions regarding this event? Is there any property to how most we want same listeners? But what? Uh, scalability. How can you implement scalability if you want to have like more than one consumer? Uh, you just don't, you just simply implement it. No, no I mean uh, the same consumer. For example, you uh, many threads. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I think I can put it here. Generally, yes, yes. It, it can, you can simply do it with... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you can simply do it with uh, queues, but uh, from what I know, in the old, in the old specification of JMS, uh, it is somewhat troublesome to do it with topics. Uh, I don't know if you put uh, uh, two or more uh, listeners to the topic if the message won't be delivered to all of them. I'm not sure. So does it mean that uh, this configuration creates uh, 100 listeners, right? Uh, Uh, 
uh, it definitely doesn't do it just uh, at the beginning they are created when they are needed oh. ok, uh, another example I have is, is a topic uh, topic with selectors The other problem is the name of this class, it shouldn't be called. Uh, unless it's was a different topic, uh, differs only one thing, it has a set selector method because I wanted to show you selectors by the way. Uh, so, as in Q, we have a connection factory. Uh, the difference is that uh, we have to specify destination type as topic. Because the default one is Q, I know why they needed to should, should work uh, without it. Uh, I defined three uh, message listeners. Uh, one is for uh, all messages, one is for messages carrying a number greater than 100, and one is for messages <laughs> carrying a number less than 100. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk server. consumed by all message consumer and the message consumer for uh, numbers smaller than 100. Let's see what happens. Destination hardcoded, and the first one top name. Maybe top name is not defined as well. I don't understand, but maybe uh, it must set. I set. It's okay. Mm. Uh, <coughs> oh, there's one concern. Message with number one. And why? Yeah. Destination so it looks like they're not right. Uh,
I thought that uh, I might um, have chosen a class with different, from different uh, examples, but no, it seems it's all okay. Yeah. For, for, for some reason, the default message, uh, sorry, uh, the respond message listener is taken from, from a different packet. It's taken from duplex example instead of topic example. I, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to uh, get to fixing right now. I don't want to waste, waste your time. Yeah. consuming of messages, which I really found useful. Uh, but unfortunately, they decided not to include in JMS to the top. Uh, so from how I see it, there's not much new things in JMS to the uh, JMS API has been uh, simplified a bit, although the, uh, <coughs> it is still backward compatible, uh, as with, I think, all the JavaScript. Uh, but if you're a Spring, you, you don't need to know actually the, all of the details. Uh, there is the asynchronous sending possibility added. So you should be able to, uh, in your code, just to say uh, that message should be sent to, to the JMS provider and uh, your method should be able to go further uh, doing other things not waiting for the JMS provider to uh, say that he it got the message. Mm. And uh, also there's, there should be an option. Uh, there, there will be something called delivery delay for messages. I don't know uh, of a use case of such thing, to be honest. So uh, it, it means that uh, you send a message to JMS provider and you say, Wait, I know, 60 seconds before uh, delivering it to some consumers. What will be the message in case if we have failed this provider? Because you might not say the second one. I don't know. It's intriguing here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, for, for use cases when you really want speed and don't care much about reliability. I don't know, maybe there will be a way to somehow uh, add some error handler for the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to briefly mention also other messaging uh, uh, protocols, etc. Uh, I must admit I don't have experience with using them. Uh, so firstly, the most promising one from how I see it is AMQP. Uh, it, it looks really good for me. It's cross-platform, it's full feature. Uh, I think you can do anything uh, in that you can do in JMS. As another fact, uh, from what I read, Qubit, uh, Apache Qubit, uh, it's a MQP implementation, uh, even gives you a way to use JMS in your Java application, and it communicates with Qubit via MQP. Uh, what I find not great about AMQP is that it's still evolving. Uh, version 0.9 or 0.10 is not compatible with 1.0. Uh, uh, currently, for example, RabbitMQ, which seems to be the most widely used AMQP implementation, doesn't support 1.0 yet. I don't know if they plan to do it. Uh, so this is what I found. Not very good about it, but uh, maybe 
uh, but it's still widely used right now. So it's definitely one to, to consider if you have an app in applications in many languages that you want to communicate asynchronously. Another one is Stop. Stop is a, a text uh, protocol. Uh, it works via HTTP. Uh, I think Rabbit MQ uh, also implements Stop. Uh, it is also a protocol implemented by HorrentQ that you can use uh, uh, for, for example, JavaScript to communicate with, uh, with HorrentQ. Uh, people complain that it doesn't uh, describe destination types, etc. The internals of the uh, asynchronous communication provider, so there might be some uh, differences. So mainly there are some use cases when there is no, not an easy way to switch between stop and provide. Uh, another interesting one is MQTT. Uh, it's extremely wide and uh, lightweight. It's used on mobile devices uh, for internal messaging, so very low resource needs. Uh, but as something that uh, it's, uh, it's really like it has to uh, be cut on some features, so there's no queue on the topic, no message properties. Are you right now working with GMS? Are you right now working with GMS? Yep. Uh, do you have any plans to move the rabbit with your own? No. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need it, we have all the Java applications communicating via JMS. We use point Q, which uh, is performant enough for us. How many points you have per uh, second? Right now, the only use for, uh, for, 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 for me, <laughs> the current company that I work is sending emails, oh. almost as simple as the, the, the first example. Uh, although we use uh, sending serialized objects there because uh, our uh, email sending app is also planned to be something that manages uh, templates, etc. So it has to have knowledge of the message. Uh, that's why it's cool that we can have, uh, have serialized Java objects. Uh, yeah, but I also worked for a company that uh, uh, when we handled payments, uh, millions of transactions per day, we also used JMS, but uh, again, this was a use case when we have only Java backend applications communicating uh, by JMS. So if uh, we had any application that is written in PHP or something, or, or we wanted to communicate our JavaScript from web app via uh, our message provider definitely would consider it. Yeah. Or maybe you just simply use stop <laughs> with one of the, 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 the thing that I find uh, particularly nice about PointQ is that you can simply embed it into your application. So when you test it, even functionally, you can simply start your one application and it has a queue embedded and you don't have to run a whole new queue or a rabbit into the server. But actually it's pretty simple to run a rabbit into the server. Yeah, yeah, definitely, but you have, you have uh, IP sports configured and spread all over the places. So if you have, can have four tests, one box led, it's a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> good.